Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about shell scripting variables and how file sourcing is done. So by the end of this video, students will be able to demonstrate uh, the use of variables and file sourcing in shell scripting. So this would be a very good moment to understand the basic block diagram of Unix system, which is going to simplify the use of variables and file sourcing in shell scripting. So this is the diagram where uh, we have seen that there is a shell in between the kernel and the application layer. So if you have this knowledge of how to access the hardware, maybe you are connecting some sort of USB drives uh, to your USB port on a computer, and then you want to access it. You need to access it through an application, then probably uh, you should be capable enough to write a shell program to uh, write a command which would access the definite hardware which you're interested in. So this is quite possible if you are known to this basic block diagram of Unix system. So let's get into the demonstration now. Okay, so we have logged in into the Ubuntu operating system. Now the first task is to open the terminal. We have logged in with the guest access having a name called root1. I'll first of all make sure that I'm logging in with admin privilege. So I'm going to make sure that I'm logging in with admin privilege. Now on the screen, what I have is I have logged in with root access into this one. Now, before doing anything, uh, let us first of all create a small uh, folder within which we are going to I have created a folder called example. I'll enter into the folder called example so that whenever I type, we'll be able to list down only the files that we have created for this particular respective session. Now, I'll first of all try to assess where I'm currently logged in. I'm logged in into home root one example folder. Here, let us first of all write a small shell script. So for that I'll be using the usual nano editor. Nano, I'll call it file.sh. So the name of the file that I have created is file and I'm, and I'm trying to use nano editor for editing it. So remember that the first uh, line of any shell script is referred as shebang. So which stands for uh, an indication, so which actually indicates uh, what shell is actually native for your operating system. So the best way of what must be the shebang uh, or the first liner of your shell code can be identified by typing a command called, so as we are already aware that echo is nothing but it's uh, similar to something like print up statement in your C language or uh, a statement which is responsible for displaying some content to the STD OUT. So I'll try to print echo shell. So this is a system wide variable which is by default uh, generated by the operating system. It's all by the operating system itself at the time of installation. So when I hit enter, you will be able to see that we currently have support of this bin slash bash. So I will type the same thing in our program. So this is the first line which is referred as shebang, which gives the user, for example, if I'm writing this shell script code and a second user is trying to read my code, then he'll be able to understand that yes, the whatever code uh, that this particular file is being uh, written in is based on the bash scripting language. So though shell scripting has uh, very few types of varieties like either corn shell, or a C shell or the bash shell, uh, which is nothing but an improved version of our shell. Um, so whenever you have the support for bash or whenever you are able to see the return type of echo dollar shell as slash bin slash bash, it's a meaning that your operating system is a born again shell. So that's the type of the shell which is uh, being supported by your operating system. 
So once you are ready with the shebang, this has to be written in every shell program that you will be writing henceforth. The next part of the shell is comment. So whatever comment you want to write, that can be prefixed with a hash sign. So whenever you write something with the help of a hash sign prefixed with that one, that is by default not considered by your file uh, as a command. So it can definitely improve the readability of your code and it's always a good practice in programming languages to write your code or equip your code with uh, lots of comments so that whenever, the, whenever a third person is trying to read your code, it becomes more readable. Now apart from this, here we are going to write commands. Now let us say I want to list it down or I want to simply print a name called Walchan. So that whenever I am saving this file by pressing Control X and then enter and then sorry uh, after Control X you need to press Y and then enter. So this has saved my file now if I simply try to hit LS it will show me the list of files and folders whichever are available and under this current folder. Now under this directory you already have a single file called file.sh which has only read access. So I want to first of all make it executable. So the command for that is going to be chmod plus x. So as we've already seen this command in the previous video, I'll show you another method of uh, making a particular file executable. So for that, you can simply go for chmod, then minus r stands for recursive and then simply put a triple seven and then write the name of the file. So now if you try to check, you will be able to identify that file.sh is now displayed in green color. It's a meaning that it is by default now an executable file. The first part is once you are aware of executing a file, you need to understand something about sourcing to the shell window. Now when you try to edit the same file again, let me introduce you a few things like I want to define a variable. So similar to any programming language, here also you have uh, access for a variety of variables. But the good part about shell scripting is that you need to simply write things like this. So I'm simply writing name is equal to Walchan. Okay, and then I want to print the same variable. So for that, as you can see, similar to any programming language, uh, name is the variable here. Walchan is the actual content that I'm trying to store inside this name variable. Then I want to display the content inside this name variable. So for this, what I need to do is use a dollar sign followed by name of the variable and then simply save it. Now if you try to execute this, so the part of execution uh, is referred as file sourcing to the shell. So there is a basic difference between the methods which can be followed. So if I simply put dot slash file dot sh, it is executing inside, uh, I mean executing inside the same shell so that the output is visible here itself. Whereas if I try to source the file to the bash by using a second method where you are supposed to write source and then the name of the file.sh, then you can see that it is displaying the content of the file also. So there is a difference. So currently as of now, you, you are not aware, I mean you are not able to see the difference here. But in the back end, the basic difference is that whenever you try to execute a file, it is executed within the same instance. For example, if I am trying to source a file, it's a meaning that I am trying to source the bash available in my operating system with a, a shell file called file.sh. So in the back end, it is going to open up another instance 
and then it executes everything there and then whatever output you are getting there that is actually printed on to the screen here so there are uh, there is a very s s tiny difference between uh, executing a file and sourcing a file so it needs to be uh, taken care of whenever you are about to uh, handle these kind of activities so that's all for this video here are the references used for this video thank you